Hi, it's Mike from Pro Tools Expert, and in this video, we're going to take a pre release sneak peek at the new ISL2 from New Gen Audio. Now, we were able to get a sneak peek of their LM Correct 2 at BVE recently, and now we're able to give you a world exclusive peek at the new version of their inter sample peak limiter, ISL2. Now, having limiters that offer a true brick wall solution that take true peaks into consideration is essential in the new loudness workflows, where we're working within a dB or two of digital headroom. And because there can be peaks in the reconstructed audio that can be up to three dBs higher than the samples on both sides, it's really essential that we can actually consider how to measure and establish what those peaks between the samples might have looked like. So by sampling four times higher, it's possible to see what went on between the samples. Now, having established the intersample peaks, it's also essential that all limiters in this new workflow are also true peak limiters. And one of the first that was available as a plugin was the ISL from New Gen Audio. And if you'd like to know more about true peak limiting and how to use the ISL in your workflow, then you can check out the two videos that I made for New Gen Audio when the ISL first came out. So what's new in ISL2? Well, if you've been looking at the plugin, at first glance, the ISL2 doesn't look that different. But don't let that put you off because there are a number of very useful features that New Gen Audio have added to ISL2. Now, the first one really relates to this auto button because they've added a new intelligent dynamic release mode. So when the auto button is enabled, as it is here, that allows the ISL2 to analyze the incoming audio signal, especially for low frequency content, and automatically extend the whole time of the limiter to make sure that at least one full wavelength of low frequency audio passes before the limiter releases. So this allows us to use much shorter release times on the normal release settings than you might otherwise consider. Because if you've got low frequency content, there's a point beyond which you can't normally reduce the release time. Otherwise, the release time is shorter than the length of one cycle of low frequency audio. But now with this clever hold extension feature, it's now possible to bring the release times right down. Whilst making sure that the limiter doesn't introduce any harmonic distortion, which is what happens normally when you try and use short release times with low frequency content. Now, there's a new section in the center of the plugin that's enabled by this little H icon here, H short for history. And this alternate view of the gain reduction, so that's our conventional gain reduction. So if we just bring the threshold down a little bit, so that's our normal gain reduction mode. So if we just re-enable the history option, you can now see that these gray sections here are the input audio, and these red sections up here are displaying the amount of gain reduction. And then we've got two additional meters down here, one called S and one called D. Now the S is short for steering. Now steering is the byproduct of limiting a stereo or a surround signal when you don't fully link each of the channel limiters. So, for example, if you've got two completely independent limiters across a stereo signal, if one side triggers the limiter, the other will remain unaffected. And, of course, this causes a gain reduction in one channel, but not the other. So the perceived image location steers away to one side. Now, this new steering meter gives you an indication of how much steering is taking place, whereas the other meter the meter labeled D for ducking, which is in fact the inverse of steering. Because of course, normally when you've got limiters, you fully link them. 
But of course, when you fully link them, it may well be that if you have a, some high audio on one channel, that pushes the limiter down. But of course, because they're linked, it pushes it down on both channels. So the channel that didn't need limiting is being ducked by the channel that did. And so by having this ducking meter, we get an indication of how much ducking is also taken place. Now, one of the reasons we need these meters is because within the ISL True Peak Limiter, we have the option to not hard link the channels. And so we need to know what the side effects might well be. And you might be thinking, well, why on earth would we ever consider not fully linking the limiters? Well, it's not always necessary to fully link all the limiters. In general, if the sound you're working with, the directional information is not important or the effect is very widely dispersed so that you can't actually localise the sound, then it may well be that some steering is preferable to unnecessary ducking. Whereas if the sound image is precise so you can easily localise it, it's probably better to have some ducking because any steering would be very noticeable. And of course, this can be further complicated in a surround sound setup where you usually have a dominant centre channel because, of course, that's where the dialogue is. Because we may well have lots of dialogue in the centre channel, but lots of dispersed sounds in the left, right and surround channels. If we fully link everything, then the dialogue channel will unnecessarily duck the side channels. So to accommodate that, on the ISL2, New Gen Audio have added an extra linking option which helps to link or unlink the centre channel. So I can actually change the amount of linking of the centre channel or we can hard link it to the side channel. So I can actually hard link it or I can reduce the amount of linking so that the dialogue doesn't unnecessarily duck the side channels. And the last feature I want to show you in this sneak preview is a compact mode. Now, although the ISL and now the ISL2 have been really carefully designed to take up as little screen real estate as possible, we can now have the situation where we've got lots of plugins open. And it'd be really nice if the ISL2 could have a compact mode. And that's what we now have. So if we go into the options and I turn on the compact mode, you can see now that it's gone into effectively a horizontal mode. And we've got all our different channel meters. We've got our gain reduction over here. We can still access all the options to change the color coding and the meter ballistics. And then, of course, we can go back into the options, turn the compact off, and then we're back into the full mode. So I hope this video has given you an insight into what New Gen Audio are adding to their true peak limiter to make it even more useful. I'll see you again soon.